Congratulations to Joe Burrow. Congratulations to Jamar Chase, who had a horrible first half, turned it up in the second half. You know, and then the rest of those guys, you know, big shout out to the Bengals defense because it was really that game literally flipped upside down in the second half. What we saw in the first half, it was the exact opposite in the second half. And, you know, Joe Burrow, you know, big shout out to him. You know, last season I had him in fantasy and he was cooking for me up until the injury. You know, I'm, I'm happy for him to see him come back this season and to bring this Cincinnati Bengals team who, you know, coming into this season, I don't think anybody was really on the Bengals going to the Super Bowl bandwagon unless you're actually from Cincinnati, you know, or, you know, maybe if, if, uh, if you were an LSU guy and you, you know, you were a fan of, uh, of Joe Burrow and, J- and Jamar Chase in college, maybe. But outside of that, I didn't see anybody going into this season and saying, you know, the Bengals going to be in the Super Bowl this year, you know, but they, they beat the odds. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, that whole, that, that offense, the defense, everybody stepped up. Shout out to the coaching staff. They will be playing in LA in the Super Bowl in two weeks against the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, the team that we did pick and, and, and did get that one right. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to the Rams for making us look good, at least on one of the picks. Cause I didn't want to have to go back onto the live and shout out to, to, to Will. I don't want to have to go back onto the live this this uh, Friday and be over two. So, so I needed I needed the dub from at least one of those things. Cause especially after the Chiefs lost, I was like, damn, I know Will gonna be waiting for us on this one. So, yeah, so like, Will, Will and I, we would we were chatting back and forth uh like during the second half of the game. And shout out to Will, man, because he actually predicted the score. He said 27-24 uh yeah. was his prediction. He got it, he hit it right on the head. Um, but you're right. I, I didn't want to, I'm gonna be honest. I, I didn't want to keep engaging the conversation mm-hmm. until at least the Rams won. Then it was like, all right, we split. We, we split. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I ain't got to hear nothing about no predictions. Cause we split. We, we even there. Um, yes. but no, the, you know, kudos to the Rams, man. Um, I, the Rams are, again, it's always ironic when, when you look back at how the season plays out, because obviously as every week we get together trip, you know, we, we're projecting on what we think is going to happen, but until this starts to get closer, you don't know who could be in the Super Bowl. And, yeah. you know, to think that back in like week seven, week eight, you and I both said Matthew Stafford is going to have to be the key to this team getting to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And I, I got to give him a ton of credit, man, because for a guy who had no playoff victories before this season, the plays that he made the last two weeks to get them to the Super Bowl, he earned this spot. He proved that he is an elite quarterback in this league, no matter how you felt about him before. You got to give credit where credit is due. They needed the big throw last week against Tampa. He makes that to get them to win. They were down 10, and it was looking spooky for the Rams for a second there. It looked like, man, maybe the Niners might start to run away with this thing. Yeah. He took the Rams right down the field, gets the score. You know, he had he almost threw a bad pick there, but then he capitalized on, on San Fran's mistake of not intercepting the pass and, and let him down again for the win. So... I got to give him his credit, man, for a guy who had never been in this predicament, never, never been successful in playoff atmosphere mm-hmm. to win the three games, to get them to the Super Bowl, um, knocking off Tom Brady and then knocking off the Niner team that had a six game winning streak against the Rams, a Niner team that, I mean, was as hot as can be because the Niners just beat the Rams in week 18, then went to Dallas and won, then went to Green Bay and won. And you're looking at that Niner team up 10 points late in the third. And it's like, man, this, I wonder, can the Rams do it? Like uh, they going to lose to them again. So it was looking, it was looking very spooky there for a second. It was in the whole, in the whole time. I'm just gritting my teeth thinking, damn, we're going to have to go back on this live and tuck tail. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, uh, we called, we called Matthew Stafford out and he was up to the, to the task. Uh, he has been amazing. I mean, outside of the one pick, uh, in, in this game, he's been amazing this entire playoffs. And he has not been going up against the Jaguars defense or, or, or you know, or, or the Raiders defense or, you know, you know, the bottom half, the Giants defense. You, know, you, can, you can throw any of these bottom half t- tier defenses up in there. He's been going up against the top defenses in football. And and back to back weeks, by the way, because obviously the Rams is probably the best defense in the league. But you know, when you're talking about the Buccaneers, you're talking about uh, the 49ers. Those are two top defenses as well that he's 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 running through. Um, I don't think you know 
you, you mentioned this is his first playoff victories in his career. He came in, changed the tone because they went to a Super Bowl a couple of years ago with Jared Goff. It didn't work out that well. Now you have a really good quarterback that you put on a great team, and he's showing and proving. Every week, back to back to back, he's showing and proving. And because of, of that, see, I'm, I don't, and I, and I don't want to, because I'm, because I'm giving Matthew Stafford all of this praise, I don't want to take away from the defense and, and, and what they've done throughout this playoff run as well. But that's expected of the defense. They've been here before. And when you're talking about the best player possibly in football, but definitely the best defensive player in Aaron Donald, when you talk about an all-time great linebacker in Vaughn Miller, and when you talk about arguably the best cornerback in football right now in Jalen Ramsey, that's expected of those guys. So, yeah, I, you know, kudos to them. I give them their praises as well. But they don't win these games if Matthew Stafford does not come to play football. And he has come to play football in every round of this playoffs. And because of that, we are now going to see for the first time ever back-to-back home Super Bowl games. Unheard of. Because when yeah. the Bucs did it, it was, I think it was years. It was yeah, like the, the, 40, 40, something like that, some, some wild number. It, it, was, it was a technicality because at the time, the, the original team who had done it, uh, they weren't. They were playing in their home state, but not their actual uh, stadium. Okay. So the the Bucks were the first team to actually play in their stadium. The Rams becoming the second team, and as you mentioned, we get the first time ever back to back. Yes. Um, but to your point, and you're right. This defense. This is what we expected of this defense, no matter what. Um, you know, people may forget, but the Rams were in, obviously in the Super Bowl four years ago. The Rams were maybe a play or two from being able to beat the Patriots a couple years ago. You know, they lose that game 16-6, not by any fault of the defense. It's just they couldn't get any offense going against the Patriots. Um, last year, the Rams were in the playoffs. They dominated the Seahawks in the first round with their defense, right? They played with their backup quarterback and won that game purely because of their defense. They went to Green Bay. Their defense played well, but Jared Goff couldn't get anything done. And that's why Sean May- they had to make the move because Sean McVay is looking at an all-time great defense similar to those Ravens of the late 90s early 2000s where it's like this defense is going to keep us in every game they're going to give us an opportunity to win and we need a quarterback who can just make a few plays Matthew Stafford is making those plays and that's the biggest difference between this Rams team this year and the Rams team last year because there haven't been much changes on offense obviously they added Odell but Odell is really just playing a Robert Woods spot right now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's the complimentary one. receiver to Cooper Cup. So everything else is still in play. The biggest difference is now you have a quarterback who can make those throws. You know, you look at them touchdowns that he's throwing to Cooper Cup. He's putting them over the defense. Them ain't like wide open receivers just running around. That's like, oh, I beat the coverage with not only the route, but with the pass. Yeah. You know, and then you look at the numbers they're putting up. Shout out to Odell Beckham, man. I, I got to shout him out too because – we wondered, you know, what was going to happen after Cleveland. He was going, going to be on a third different team. You know, did he still have the same fire that we saw early on? And he shined and, and he's come to play. He's another guy who had never had playoff success. And when you look at the numbers he's put up now for this team, this is what makes them a, a legitimate threat to now win it all. Obviously, they're in the Super Bowl, but we know about Cooper Cup. We know he's going to get his catches. And to your point, to show you how good this Ram offense is, this is the same Niner defense that shut down Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams last week. Yeah. They couldn't shut down Cooper Cup and, and, and OBJ and Stafford this week. You both know what I'm saying? Because, 100 yards, 100 plus right, yards. Both over 100 yards. They lose their tight end because Higby goes out early in this game. Cam Akers never really got going, and yet they still found a way to get both receivers over 100 yards. The Ram team, I, I think they're special, man. I think we're looking at something really special in terms of talent in Los Angeles. Yeah. I, you know, you, you got to love it. And, you know, from somebody who's, <clears throat> excuse me, been a supporter of, of Odell from, you know, from his Giants days, you know, and I, I didn't, I didn't want to see Odell go. I get it. You know what I mean? But who wouldn't want to have an Odell Beckham Jr. on their team? Right. But whatever, you know, he goes over to the Browns and did horribly, um, you know, to where Odell gets the bulk of the blame. It's, all on Odell. And, and again, not saying it's not, you know, 
you know, without any type of merit because Odell, you know, does seem to find himself in situations. We've talked about some of his past indiscretions. However, on the football field, though, it's a little bit different. So, you know what I mean? Those those indiscretions were stuff that was going on off the football field. It had nothing to do with football, the issues that he was having, you know what I mean? So now we have this situation where they, all right, we get to split from the Browns. And the, the, the same way, uh, you know, I, I said that uh, that Chiefs-Bengals uh, game flipped upside down. That thing flipped right up on upside down. And we, you know, and we saw just how good Odell Beckham Jr. still is. You know what I mean? A lot of people was writing him off. Oh, you know, this is good. He's about to switch. Everybody has something to say. Odell Beckham Jr. has balled out from the day he got to Los Angeles to play with the Rams. He has been doing what we have come to know and love Odell Beckham Jr. for. And he had an amazing game. Again, 100-plus yards receiving this past game against one of the best defenses in football. We both just sat up here two weeks ago and spoke about how uh, Fred Warner and, 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 and Nick Bosa are two of the best defensive players in football. You know what I mean? So you you got you got to commend these these guys and, and what they did. I'm so happy for Odell Beckham Jr. He deserves this because you know he he, he fought through the BS. He fought everything that people was throwing at him. The media fans getting at Odell, Odell, Odell. No man, because because you know. Uh, Baker's is Baker. Baker was the one. He was doing everything right. Odell's doing everything wrong. Well, guess what? Baker been 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 at home filming them commercials for the past couple of weeks. Odell's at home still with playing. Baker Mayfield. At home with exactly. <laughs> at home Odell, with Odell's Baker still out. He's he's still yes. playing, right? He's still playing. Yeah. He got one he's more still, game. I believe he's playing. still playing. Yes. In two weeks, he'll be playing again in Los Angeles for the team that he left. You know, Baker for. There's there's a there's a stat um, in the in the group chat. Shout out to the uh, for the love of the game, where in Odell's what eight games with the Rams, he has more touchdowns, more receiving yards, uh, more catches than he had in his last eighteen games with the Browns. That's crazy. Take it for what it's worth. And I will say this too because I, I agree with what you said. I've been critical of Odell because of the things off the field. And I've always questioned if he's a guy who's truly committed to, to being a winner or if he's a guy who just likes the fact that he has the limelight because he's such a talented football player. I don't know him personally. So this is my assumption, Trip. I think what happened in Cleveland was a wake-up call for him. And I think there was a certain level of growth that needed to happen with, with OBJ. I want to point to a play that took place in yesterday's game. Jimmy Ward. It was a dirty hit. Jimmy Ward hits him helmet to helmet. Mm-hmm. I think the old Odell would have reacted differently. And you saw it yesterday. Odell th- just kind of put his hands up like, yo, what are we doing? Yeah. Whereas this ain't the Odell who was kicking the nets and throwing his helmet in New York. I, like I said, I don't know him personally. This is my own assumption, though. Leaving Cleveland and, and everything that took place there, I think he realized, like, look, it's, it's, it's now do a die time. Either I'm going to transition into the player that, I, that everyone expects me to be, right? Or I'm going to continue to be this guy who's a little bit more diva-ish, who's pouting a little bit too much, and who isn't fully focused on what it takes to be a winning player. Not a good player, because no one's ever questioned how good of a player he was. Yeah. The questions always were, could he be a winning player? Could he be a guy that would elevate your team? I think we saw that yesterday, because without his contributions, the Rams may not win. And again, he I thought he handled that situation perfectly. That was a bad hit by Jimmy Ward. And most guys would have flipped out, like, why are you targeting my head on when you see me dive to the ground? And he handled it like, nah, I'm good. You know, I just want to know what you're thinking, but I'm I'm straight. We good. Let's keep playing. It's maturity, man. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's just maturity. And I think he he finally gets it because you know when you're when you're made to be the scapegoat, when you're made to be the bad guy all the time, you know that that gets old after a while. You want and you want to change that narrative. One and then two. Odell's up for for a new contract this year after after this year. So. I would say right now he's in he's in a good space to uh to get a nice lucrative contract next season, whether it be back with the Rams, that I, I can't say because I don't know how they, they cap situation is looking. And I'm sure Odell is gonna command a nice size check. Um and then you know, and especially if they if they win a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? He's, he, he, yesterday's price is not today's price. 
I, I think it's a great, I mean, like you said, we got to see what the numbers look like. We're getting ahead of ourselves, but I would like to see him stay with the Rams. I think it's a good fit. I think the way McVay coaches that team, you could tell he, he's, he is a player's coach. Those guys love playing for him. He knows how to handle the stars. I would like to see him stay there. Plus, I know Odell, you know, he's getting his family started. He got a baby on the way with his girlfriend. So, go ahead, stay out there in Hollywood, man. Keep getting that money and keep playing for, for a good team.